we're in Santa Barbara and we're gonna put some like a full solar kit onto this van it doesn't have any solar stuff and doesn't even have a battery in it so we're gonna have to do quite a little bit of work I'm just measuring out to see kind of the space we have so there's a space where I'm standing on the back and there's a space at the front here and they could go width ways or long ways um, but the main thing is at the back there's this um there's this railing stuff um, and as soon as the sun kind of comes low it will kind of block out put a shadow on the on the panels so ideally not and also we've got this big ridiculous aircon box thing so again if that shadows the panel then it's no good so ideally it's just um two at the front long ways might be better because it'll reduce the drag um but we just kind of have to check it out go to the panel shop and see if they've got something for us that will fit it uh, so we're just here in Windy Nation and uh, we just bought some kit. This is a warehouse in Ventura. Um, hopefully this one's going to go well in the van. I'll go through the kit now. What seems to be the cheapest way to do it is to have two um, golf cart batteries is what they call it. And these two are 6 volt and if we put them in series, they'll be 12 volt rating. The, these are 230 amp hours. Um, so when I put them in series, we will have 230 amp hours on 12 volt and that's actually really good value for money because these batteries were like a hundred dollars each or just about um so for 200 dollars you got 230 amp hours which is actually quite a lot for that money i think that's pretty good we have these two flexible 100 watt solar panels from um, windy nation uh, and these are about 180 dollars each uh, and also in the kit we have also windy nation i'm guessing they just rebrand it um, it's a MPPT solar charge controller um, and it's a, because we have um, 200 watt solar panel and we might want to add some more at some point so we've got a 30 amp charge controller. We've also got some industrial strength velcro so we're going to attach it by velcro rather than like really strong double sided or glue it on just because then it gives us the option to take it off or if, um, if they sell the van then we can do something else with the, with the kit um, because it's pretty much removable and you can put the kit into another van if you wanted to. Uh, we just got some connectors, some wire strippers and some thick cables to connect these into, into, um, into series. So I'm going to go through with you quickly how a solar system works on a car or a van. Now, the panel cannot go directly into the battery. It just doesn't work like that. It needs to go through a solar charge controller. And solar charge controller, there are two types. There's like a standard type and there's MPPT. MPPT is just more effective um, and they usually have program, program methods to basically support different type battery types, charge them better. If you can, if you really want to get the most out of your panels, buy an MPPT solar charge controller. They tend to be a bit more expensive for like a 30 amp one you're probably going to spend 150 to 200 dollars now what happens is you have your panel and your panel goes into your solar charge controller uh, the solar charge controller then sends it to the battery but also out of the solar charge controller comes the load that means it can distribute the power where it's kind of needed best and is most effective so the solar charge controller is like a middleman right in the middle of all of the other things, the solar panel and the battery, and then that goes out to your all of your 12 volt appliances from the load ports. Uh, and the kind of cool thing with that is you can always see what's going on with your panel, what's going on with your battery, you can see how much is coming in, going out, and that gives you a really good indication of like how your solar system is performing. But like you see, unless you're like using a huge amount of power, maybe powering fridges or aircon, I don't know if you can power aircon, basically you're good. Uh, so this is a box on this van where, um, this RV I guess, where the old battery was but apparently it was nicked out of there. But this box isn't going to be big enough to fix both of them. Um, so we're just basically going to have to rip out this box. And, and there is enough room inside, um, I think, to get these two batteries in if we do take that out. Um, it's just there's a lot of crap in there and it's pretty dirty. Don't really have any tools, but the, uh, the nut tool from our country has actually been pretty good to kind of like chisel out some of the uh, some of the parts. But there's this horrible metal box. Get it out is actually a real pain. Yeah, I'm just tearing metal with my bare hands. <laughs> ripped out of this battery box, so there's a bit of a mess. And inside there's basically enough space to put two batteries. 
just enough. So, just enough space to put both of these on the front of the van. And just gonna work out how to connect up these together. Um, using the sort of T-joint things to bring both of them into, into a single panel. So it's connecting the two positives and the two negatives basically together. 40 feet of cable, um, hopefully it's enough to wire into our solar charge controller from the panels. Um, should be fine actually, the van's only 18 feet long, so we're good. We've got the cables through a hole in the back of the van now, um, but we're going to run them along the roof just on the side of the gully. Um, but what we need to do is just tape it down so we just know we've got enough cable before I use some of the other cable for other purposes. So just going to tape it on with some gaffer tape. And I think after that, what we'll probably do is just like use some kind of sealant or glue and just glue the lines down. Just don't really want to put more holes in the roof because it's fiberglass and it's just prone to leaking when it gets a bit older. We're also going to have to connect our cable into the solar panel cable connectors. So connecting up the solar panel cables, they have these special connectors. I think they're MC4, but I'll put a note if not. Um, and basically what you need to do is, firstly you take a strip of the wire, then you put on the connector, and it's slightly different. The, 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 like the bigger, bulkier one is basically got a, um, got a shorter one. Uh, and then you just need to crimp that on. Uh, make sure it's done really well, super solid, it's good. And then you put the little screw thing on the back. This goes on with a serrated edge down. And now this is a bit you need to make sure that you push it in properly. You feel a, connect, a click. If it doesn't click, then it won't probably do it properly. And then you can basically screw this thing on the back. Is that the right one? Yep. And do that nice and tight. And now we have it, and these all connect together. Like so. Awesome. We're trying to work out which the 12 volt um, feed out is because everything has to come out from the load from the solar charge controller for it to work properly. Um, but with an old van, it's kind of like, kind of confusing. Um, but I think we found it. Just got to work out which one it is. One's probably a feed in from, uh, from the alternator for a split charge. So with these batteries, they're not fully sealed ledger batteries like you would normally buy, I guess, in Europe. Um, so the batteries in my van are fully sealed, just don't have the same venting requirements and they'll only vent a little bit if you overcharge them. These ones, however, they're fully venting. So if you see that hole at the back, we're basically going to make sure that's a vented hole, which it is anyway, that is what it was for. And then this whole area will just seal off um, and that should probably do the job um, that we need anyway. So I think pretty much worked it out, which are the um, 12 volt ring. It's kind of confusing with these old RVs because basically they have mains which will also power the 12 volt system. So it goes through a converter which changes it to 12 volt, but then it also run off the battery as well. So it's kind of a little bit more complicated than you'd make a van conversion if you're doing it yourself. Um, so anyway, we've got this all lined up. Um, we're going to have to fix those batteries in place, but for now I just want to test the system. Um, this is a charge controller, solar panel in, solar panel out. Um, load in and out this is what we've tested already um, and now we're just going to connect up the batteries and it's going to be a little bit of a moment of truth so hopefully it works yeah so moment of truth hopefully this will plug in and work and something's happening let's have a look at that so batteries is a little bit of charge by the looks of it um, and it says solar panels going into the battery from that little smiley face and go into a light bulb with a tree in it. That's probably a good thing. So we installed the solar panels about seven weeks ago and just been checking the stats on the, on the box. It kind of records how much has gone through it. And in seven weeks, we've had 874 amp hours of energy produced by the solar panels and 46 amp hours has gone to the load. So mostly we've been running just like the heater, which is a gas powered, like propane based heater, um, but it's powered by the electricity for the fan and everything. Um, and lights, charging laptops, phones. So that gives an idea of like how amazing these panels are. Uh, these are uh, sun power panels or cells, um, a German company, and they're just cranking. These uh, 200 watts is probably better than the 
the 300 watt panel I have on my van in Spain. So it's really good quality panels, really effective. And even this um, solar charge controller, is it MPPT? I'm not sure, it's pretty small. Um, it might be kind of fake MPPT, but whatever. Um, it's working and it works really well. It's quite a cheap, quite a cheap solution. Um, but yeah, in, on the whole, it's been an amazing success. Like more electricity than we can use, even when we're not really trying to park in the sun all the time. We're just doing our thing, kind of almost forgetting about it most of the time. It's really quite incredible. So on the whole, it's been a really successful integration. Put retrofitting solar onto a really old camper like this. Uh, and if it's something that you're looking to do, it's not so complicated, it's well worth doing. You can kind of off-grid your old camper, uh, which you can open up the doors and never to have to like use campsites or whatever and pay for electricity hookups. Um, obviously it won't power a lot of your mains appliances. Like this one runs the aircon only off the mains and other things, but it will power your heater, it will power your fridge, it will power your lights, charging your stuff. And you can, even if you want to make it a bit more efficient, you can change some of the light bulbs for LED light bulbs that so you can buy them in like most like garages and things these days. So check it out it's really worth doing it kind of like it's a, in my mind it's a massive upgrade for an old camper in between the contrasts of our souls.